Well, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed Congress last night in an emotional wartime speech, telling the world his country is, quote, alive and kicking. During Zelensky's historic U.S. visit, President Biden reaffirmed his support for Ukraine for, quote, as long as it takes. Zelensky urged Congress to do the same, as lawmakers consider a bill that includes $45 billion in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. CBS News foreign affairs correspondent and moderator of Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan, joins me now with more. Uh, Margaret, so such a powerful moment to watch the Ukrainian president on Capitol Hill. What stood out to you from President Zelensky's speech? Well, Elaine, he navigated some of those political headwinds uh, that are headed his way. Just in that soundbite you played there, um, you know, one of the things that Republican skeptics have voiced is the need for more accountability, uh, more ov oversight of funding going to Ukraine, especially with the weaponry. And that's why he is emphasizing we handle it responsibly. Um, this isn't charity, that it's actually a good deal. He actually said, you know, we drive the tanks and can fly the planes if you give them to us. Uh, so he was really trying to hit the notes that would uh, calm some of the concern, particularly from more conservative members of the caucus um, who are about to take the majority in the House come January. Uh, also emphasizing that Iran has now staged a military alliance with Russia, something that will also resonate with Republicans and also emphasizing something for the progressive caucus that has also started to question this war and U.S. Uh, support for it, saying that he had laid out a 10-point plan to President Biden for a peace process, though coming back to that fundamental issue of Vladimir Putin just doesn't want to negotiate at all right now. All right. So speaking of President Putin, how do you think President Zelensky's speech and his visit as a whole is being viewed by Moscow. You think President Putin was paying close attention? Oh, of course he was. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the United States it is the arsenal of democracy here. I mean, the United States is leading uh, the way on, in terms of providing the lion's share of um, military and financial support and really leading the way uh, for Europeans to follow. It's not just the U.S., but the United States really is the pace setter here. The Kremlin said that when it came to that decision of the U.S. to provide a Patriot missile battery, that it's not going to be a game changer, uh, that this shows that it's actually the West that wants this war, you know, really just sort of spinning it to say they're not worried, um, but also not making any uh, motions towards a diplomatic end to the conflict. In fact, Ukraine's generals have warned in recent days that they believe Russia is preparing for a new offensive as soon as January, perhaps February, and could again attempt to assault the capital of Kyiv. And Margaret, you mentioned Republicans in Congress. How much do you think this speech actually bolstered GOP support that has been waning a bit recently? You know, I can't Imagine, I can't remember the last time that someone, a world leader, got a welcome like this. Mm. I mean, this was a hero's welcome. Mm -hmm. Speaker Pelosi had to say, basically, stop, <laughs> stop applauding. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Zelensky turned around and said, this is too much uh, at one point. I mean, he really had this hero's welcome coming to the floor directly from uh, the front lines of the conflict, even wearing, you know, the, the sort of uh, wartime garb that mm -hmm. he does. Um, and he is sending that message that this is not as perilous as a trip to the front lines, but it is just as important, acknowledging respecting the American people, speaking to them in English. That was a choice he normally engages and is most comfortable in Ukrainian. The two times I interviewed him, uh, he wanted it to be in Ukrainian because he's most comfortable communicating that way. This was a direct sales pitch to the American people. And so this was that attempt to change minds, whether it succeeded or not. We had uh, a number of Republicans uh, in the House. Really, you don't see the same skepticism in the Senate. It's the House uh, say that they wouldn't stand up, for example, during the ovation. That is a small caucus, but it is a powerful one because the Republican majority is so slim. And that's why the leadership like Kevin McCarthy and Steve Scalise have had to try to um, you know, sort of play both sides of this uh, and say not that aid would be cut off, but that it will be harder to secure going forward and you'll have more scrutiny. So we will see this current package if it passes in the omnibus 
uh, is about $45 billion. That's the largest package to date. And it is estimated that it could take us through May of 2023. But as President Zelensky said himself, honestly, it's not enough weaponry. So you mentioned uh, President Zelensky's uh, sort of wartime garb, and I was really struck by the images out of the Oval Office as well, where you saw, you, accustomed to seeing, you know, heads of state wearing three-piece suits and very fancy shoes and the like. He was there, and I noticed his boots. He was wearing boots that, um, you know, very much are something you would see him wear uh, on the front lines there. It's not an image that you see every day. And there's been some comparison, as you know, between last night and the speeches by U.K. Prime Minister Winston Churchill in the 40s. You, you went through this a, a little bit ago, but how significant is having a leader of a country at war speak directly to Congress in this way? Because it was striking, despite um, what you mentioned, a, a bit of um, perhaps uh, a skepticism, people not wanting to necessarily stand up, but for the most part, a very unifying response, a unified show of um, support for the Ukrainian president. It really has been. I mean, up up till now, to this moment we're in, I, I would have said there are two things that Congress has bipartisan agreement on. And one is the threat posed by China. The other is the need to support Ukraine uh, against Russian aggression. And particularly in the Senate, uh, Leader McConnell is very much a Russia hawk and has said very clearly that from his perspective, this aid needs to continue and that it's essential for the defense of all democracy, that this fight is representative of the fight of the West. Um, but as we were saying, those Republicans in, in the House, um, it, it's more of this sort of anti-establishment thinking that we have seen really come to the fore, particularly during the era of, of President Trump, that Trumpism continues to, to live there. So. Uh, that isn't going away quickly. Um, you know, you have hawks like Liz Cheney no longer in Congress come January. Um, but you still do have people like Mike McCall, the head of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Mike Turner, the head of the Intelligence Committee, who see this as so essential uh, and this aid continuing. But it will be a harder thing to secure going forward. It, it is interesting and definitely uh, the, the Speaker of the House and then President Zelensky referenced that that wartime visit by Winston Churchill, who also came, by the way, not necessarily in a three-piece suit, but representative of being a, a nation at, at war uh, at times. You know, he did when he was in Washington, sometimes dressed down. Uh, but for President Zelensky, <clears throat> excuse me, he literally went from the east of, of his country, from the battle lines, bringing that flag to the House. This is part of the symbolism. This is part of the messaging here that everything is on the line for them. Um, for President Zelensky to choose to leave his country at this moment for the very first time that we know of since the war began uh, sends a message of confidence in terms of the support for his own government domestically, um, that he wouldn't be, for example, you know, felled in a coup, uh, but also uh, the need to come and visit and, and say, thank you, the gratitude is there, please continue it. Um, it's an important message and certainly was an important message for people at home as well. And as we've learned, uh, particularly with President Zelensky, that ability to communicate, that ability to project um, resilience and defiance, um, he has become iconic. And that has been one of the most powerful weapons, frankly, that the Ukrainians have had to date. A really remarkable moment to watch. Margaret Brennan for us. Margaret, thank you. Thank you.